Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is the 25th of June uh, for the June Daily League Code Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord and smash whatever. Uh, today's problem is redundant connection. So I usually start these live. So if it's, if it's a little bit slow, fast forward, whatever you need to do. Okay, what is it? In this problem, a tree. Okay, you're given a graph that started out as a tree. With one additional edge. The edit edge has two different vertices. So, okay. We move, we turn an edge that can, if there are multiple answers, we turn the answer that occurred last in the input. Okay, so basically, let's break this, let's break this down a little bit. So, basically, now we have a graph, it's undirected, um, and it is a tree, right? And what is, what, what is the thing with a tree? So the thing with a tree is that there's only one unique path from any um, any two nodes. Um, so and the other thing is that there are no cycles, right? So if there's a cycle, that means that it is no good. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think about w which way to do it. Uh, if there are multiple answers, we turn the answer that occurred last. So this tie-breaking thing is a little bit critical because then now we have to process them backwards. I think the ideal thing to do is just, you know, given these edges, one at a time, add add them. Mm. Let's see. Actually, the, 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 the answer that occurred last is a little bit annoying. Um... Maybe. Maybe not. I think that part is I'm in a little trouble with. But yeah, but you can just go from from the beginning to the end and then add these edges into the graph. And then if if adding these two uh or if adding an an edge between these two nodes creates a cycle, then then uh by definition, that that is the one that you can remove, and there are some like things that are maybe hand wavy over, um, and which is that it's the first one that, and th there should only be one answer, and that's the first one because because when once you generate a cycle, that means that by definition, all the other ones are within the same cycle. Um, you know, they they you can remove any of them, and the last one. The one that occurs last in the input is the one that, um, it, it you know that's the 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 one that's the tiebreaker. So so you should be able to process them from left to right, uh, is what I'm trying to say here. Um, okay. So how would you do that? Well, it turns out that there is a data structure that you can use, and that's basically the idea: is that you just process them left to right, and then you just draw these edges. Um, you can literally visualize it by doing it on paper as well and then just doing it from left to right. And then the, the other question is how can you do it in a quick enough way? And that becomes a data structure question though. In this case, n is a thousand. So even if you're a little bit lazy or sloppy, um, you can do an n square algorithm and that'll be okay. So you don't actually need something that crazy, but I am gonna do it with Junior and fine uh, and you know, give yourself some props if you already guessed that's where this is going. And let's get, let's get started then. I think that's actually pretty straightforward. Once you have the union find implemented, then you can just it becomes straightforward. So I, I actually recently did a video with us or did a problem. I think maybe last week or the week before with union find. So yeah, get another chance to practice it as well. So so let's go. Uh, so so what I do, um, I. I don't know, I wouldn't say that I memorized it, but I remember a couple of concepts and then I just kind of implement it the same way every time. Uh, you should find a way to do it for yourself as well because that's that's the best way to kind of um, to do it. Um, okay, so what is N? That, that, that may be a little bit tricky, but keeping in mind that as we said, the number of edges is also the number of nodes because there's only one extra edge. So it's a little bit it's a little bit wonky without explanation, but try to think about it if 
if you have trouble with that point. But yeah, so now we have two things with Union Fine. There's the Union and the Fine. Uh, I always, yeah. Let's do the Fine first. And then if parents, I guess parent, not parents, right? Hmm. Per x is equal to, uh, if it's not equal to x, then parents of x is equal to u fine of parent of x. Otherwise, we turn parent of x. Uh, and I'm, I'm, again, just as the other video, I'm not going to go over union fine that much because, like I said back then too, is that if you take like algo or something in, in college, union fine could easily be a, a day or two in semester. Um, so it's like, you know, a couple of hours. Uh, maybe some of it's academic, but you know, so I'm not gonna be able to explain it that much here. And also, I think they're probably good videos anyway. I have explained it in the past in my stream, but maybe one day I'll, I'll do it. If you if you're interested in me explaining Union Fine my way, let me know in the comments, and maybe I'll, I'll you know, maybe I'll come across it. Uh, but in any case, this is how I usually write it. Uh, I do do path compression, but I don't do um, by rank. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, what was it called? Something by rank. So yeah, in case you're curious. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, there's only like 10 lines of code and that includes spacing. So I don't usually think about it. The only two concepts I think about is this path compression where like, okay, if this is not the, if this is not the, uh, the head node of this union fine tree, then we, we set it to, you know, we recursively set it to the parent so that it keep, keeps on compressing. That's why it's compression. Um, and then union is just here, find the head node of A, find the head node of B, set the head node of A to set the head node of B. Sometimes you could, you could, and if you have, like, if you wanted to do uh, tie breaking by rank or size or whatever, that this is where you would break it. But, but because of path compression, I don't find it usually that matters. And some people might disagree with me, but for the most part, it's hard to construct. Um, I mean, you have to be very specific about constructing a test case in which this this doesn't work. So probabilistically, you're okay. And in, in theory, depending on how you do it, you could just randomize the input or something like that if you worry about um, getting charged or something. But yeah, so now that we have the union find, that becomes straightforward. So now you have for you, we, in edges, uh, if you find of you is you go to you find of we that means that they be belong to the same component so then we just return you we right we return it as a list yep okay otherwise we union you and we and that's pretty much it uh, i guess we don't have to return anything here because mm, it'll never be reached but just want to double check that this is one. Okay, so this is actually from zero to one, or uh, one to n. Sorry, not from zero to one. Oh, sorry. Anyway, is one index not zero index? So I'm mean, you. Depending on how you want to write it, I I usually just modify it like this here, and that should be good. And of course, that would come out in testing anyway. But but I always double check. Usually, it's not a big deal, as long as you double check. Oh no. I mess up somewhere. Hmm. Oh, eh. I, I have to add back one. Whoopsie daisies for the answer. I was like, hmm, that doesn't seem to make sense. But okay. So that looks good. Let's give it a submit. Uh, one thing that I should have tested, which I did not, was actually with if, um, if n is equal to one or something. I forgot to just double check either in testing or just double check the constraint but this one seems okay so yeah so we got a little bit fortunate there because sometimes problems like to kind of full curve or at you and and whatever but but yeah so what is the complexity of this um well technically that's not the way that i did it but if the, if you do the optimal union fine there is a quote unquote constant or the very slow growing function that we were inverse inverse Ackerman function uh, which will you know explaining that part is I feel like to be beyond the scope of this video because even I feel like even if you get it explained in class uh, people don't even use it 
Um, but there is a user proof of the lock stop N, which is the repeated logarithm or whatever. Um, so maybe you could play around with that as well. But even then, that's like, I don't know. I think inverse Ackerman fu function of the size of the atoms in the universe is like six, and the log star of n is like 10 or something. I don't know. Something really small. I forget what it is. But effectively constant, really, if you look at either of those numbers. Um, so, so yeah, so for, for the sake of purpose, I'm going to say, you know, uh, this is constant. Uh, you may, you may, you yeah, know, you may play around with, with that idea. Um, yeah, you you would play around with different ideas, and I think you know if you're on an interview, some sometimes these complexities, you just want to know that you know what you're talking about, and uh, whether the semantics is this is constant or not. You know, like if you know the stuff, it doesn't matter. Right? They're not. This is not a. You're not testing against a robot who'll be like, nope, you pressed the wrong button. So, uh, and and that's your OA, I guess. But anyway, so yeah, so. Let's just pretend for now that these are O of 1 operations, roughly speaking, and therefore for a number of edges, we do O of 1, for each one of those edges, we do O of 1 operation, so total is going to be O of n time, which is linear time. And keeping in mind that linear in this case is the number of edges, because that's the size of the input. And also, the number of edges is just the number of vertices plus 1, so we... Usually, if you want to talk about V plus Y, V is equal to Y effectively, at least in the big O sense. Uh, and in this case, it actually is exactly, because they guarantee that is exactly the scenario. But yeah, um, that's all I have. Oh, in terms of space, this is also linear. That part, I think, is easy to explain. I don't think anyone uh, needs to hear from Larry here. Uh, and you can also maybe add a little bit additional factor about the the path compression, but again, even then, that's going to be adverse linear if you never compress until some weird thing, but, but it should be okay. Uh, but yeah, that's all I have for this one, I think. Uh, happy Friday, happy weekend coming up. Uh, stay good, stay cool, I'll see you later, and to good mental health. Bye-bye.